Welcome to a life refurbished where you are reminded through furniture refinishing that there's hope doesn't matter how tough things get. This art deco style buffet was brought to me by a person that spotted my work via Facebook marketplace. She has seen the finish on this empire style dresser and asked me to replicate it on this buffet. As I'm removing the hardware, I'm noticing that the finish is quite flaky. I'm also seeing that even though the handles are quite wide, they were only attached with one screw. Because of that, you can tell that the handle move around a lot. This created almost a circular groove around it. I'll be filling that up with some wood filler, but before, I need to make sure that my piece is completely clean. Today, I'm using this really good degreaser from Simple Green, but you can use a vinegar and water mixture or done dish soap and water. The whole idea here is to have your piece contaminant free before the abrasive in your sander pushes any of those contaminants into the wood grain. I'm detaching the decorative piece on the top. This way I can have better access to both the top of the buffet and this decorative piece so I can sand them both better. And after attaching a 150 grit sanding sheet to my surf prep sander, I got to work. The finish is coming off super easy. In order to give my surface some tooth so that the new paint job will adhere, I need to sand off as much as this flaky finish as possible. Because if I don't, I would be painting over a surface that's barely hanging in there, which means it won't be long before the new paint job gets scratched off or starts spilling off. I'm not sure why I didn't remove the doors when I was removing the hardware, but anyway, uh, I ended up removing them. That way I could have access to both sides. This will make both the sanding and painting process easier. To sand the areas I have a lot of grooves, I'm using the Surprep Proform 5 inch foam pads. The foam pad hugs around the grooves, preserving their shape, which is really important. I also did a little bit of hand sanding in those parts that were hard for my sander to reach. As you may already know, any sanding creates a bunch of dust, which means that I need to wipe my piece down clean and this time I'm using a TSP substitute and then I'm going to start working on any repairs that this buffet needs. The first thing I'm addressing is the grooves that were created by the rotation of the handle. And I'm mixing some Bando. Bando is a paste that comes with a hardening cream. As soon as the hardening cream is mixed with the Bando paste, it gets hard within seconds. So I always make sure to work really, really fast. Generally, it takes 30 minutes for Bando to dry and then you can come back to sand it. But it really depends on the size of your repair. Sometimes it might take a little longer. After I sanded the repairs using 120 grit, I wiped down my piece one last time and then diluted this green dye concentrate solution in water. Just follow the instructions in the bottle. The dye is going to help to bring down any of the red tones that are in this wood. I'm going to be staining this part with a gray color water-based stain. And sometimes if you don't bring the red tones down before staining it, the wood underneath the stain looks a little pink. So I want to avoid that by making it look a little bit more brown. It took three rounds of this green dye application before I achieve the desired results. After the surface was completely dry, I apply one coat of these general finishes graced on color water-based wood stain. The great thing about using water-based stains is that they dry really fast, so after a couple of hours, I'll be able to start priming the rest of my piece. You'll only need to wait two minutes before wiping off the excess evenly with the grain using a cloth or an absorbent paper towel. The next morning, I used some painter's plastic tape to cover the top and protect it from the primer that I'll be spraying. I'm gonna be using uh, my clear shellac base primer since I'm gonna be painting and glazing with a dark tone. Just a reminder that when you sand your piece, you're waking up and you're stirring some oils in the wood that unless you apply your primer, they're gonna filter through your new finish and they're gonna show as brown and red tones. 
I want to black those wood tannings by applying a primer and I'm applying a total of three coats. Now I have to tell you that now and then I run in, into an antique that rebels against the process of refinishing. That was the case on this piece but for now I just want you to take in the process that I'm following which is a process that I follow about 99% of the time. I start by cleaning, sanding, priming and finally here I'm knocking down any of the sheen that the clear shellac left to make sure that my paint is going to adhere. The base color for today's makeover is called Blue Pine from Fusion Mineral Paint. I'm going to be painting two coats before I move on to glazing. I've used Fusion Mineral Paint several times and I can tell you that even after 30 minutes if you try to scratch that paint it's not gonna go anywhere but being that I'm gonna be glazing this piece I want to be a hundred percent sure that my paint is completely dry that's why I'm waiting two hours before I apply the glaze To create your own glaze color, all you need is the clear glaze from Fusion. You'll need to mix four parts of the clear glaze to one part of the paint color you chose. Today I'm using the color Ash. To apply the glaze, all I'm using is a cheap brush. Your glaze application doesn't need to look perfect or even pretty, just cover the surface. I know that this is the part that can look a bit daunting or intimidating because it's not pretty at all. But remember that glaze is meant to look translucent, so don't expect full coverage. In fact, we're going to be wiping it off right after we apply it. Once an area in your lint-free paper towel gets oversaturated with the glaze, it's just gonna smear the glaze back into the piece. So just make sure to keep folding the paper towel, use the areas that are not saturated and keep wiping. I do find that there is a little bit of an art to glazing because you can wipe off as much as you can. Um, in fact, in the drawers, you're gonna see that I apply a second coat and I wipe off the middle section of them, leaving the edges a bit darker because I wanted to add some dimension to my piece that way. If you are a beginner at glazing, I highly recommend Fusion Clear Glaze. This brand gives you a good 10 minutes of open work time, meaning you can keep wiping off or adding glaze to it if you are not happy with how it's looking. I find that other brands start drying much faster and when something starts drying and you try to wipe it off like I'm doing here, it starts looking really funky. You're not gonna like it. So once again, if you're new, this is my recommendation for you. Try this brand. The only thing to keep in mind is that you have to wait 24 hours before applying your top coat when using this glaze. Here you're gonna see why I love glazing so much. You see how it settles down in those grooves? It highlights these pretty details and in my opinion, it makes these a very unique piece. Normally at this point in the video I'm getting really close to the finish line, super excited to let you know that 
after 24 hours I top coated the piece which you're gonna see here that I did and then that would be the end of today's video but no today because this piece threw a curveball at me and I'm gonna be sharing with you what that was but first I'm gonna show you how we revive the wood inside this compartment I'm using a triple zero steel wool to help me open the wood grain and the restorative finish is a tinted oil so again I'm opening the wood grain with the steel wool then rubbing the oil in those shallow scratches and it made a huge difference now to the no saw fun part after top coating and i thought i was done i started seeing some brownish spots that i talked to you always at the beginning of each video which is bleed through you might be asking well i thought you primed and yes i did and sometimes some pieces you can follow all the right steps and still get bleed through I seriously compare pieces of furniture to people. You cannot treat each person or each piece the same. They all are gonna ask something different from you. So after I scuff sanded, I isolated the area that I was gonna prime with some tape and use some bin with shellac based primer. Painted and glazed again, but I ran into another issue. Sometimes when you spray the primer, it doesn't spray even. Even though I sanded it, apparently I didn't sand it enough. And you can see where the primer was applied heavily and it was being highlighted by the glaze, which meant that I needed to wait for the glaze to dry and start over. Picture to the right, I'm showing you the results of my frustration. I just grabbed the scraper and scraped the heck out of it, sanded the heck out of it. And once again, I'm wiping, I'm priming, sanding that until smooth and painted it for the third time. The reason why I'm sharing my hiccups with you is to encourage you. Just because something is not looking on turning how you want it to doesn't mean that you have to give up or walk away. You can take one day break and then come back the next day. That's usually what works for me. For the final detail, I'm using this rough and buff on the hinges so that they'll match the hardware my client chose. Now let's take a quick look to where these buffets started. And this is how it looks today. I definitely think that it looks way more elegant than it did before. I'm thrilled with the results. Let me know what you guys think of today's makeover in the comments. Remember to subscribe, like, or leave a comment if you enjoyed today's content.